Hey, welcome to the Construction Zone Online. I'm Pastor Marcus. Here's my veterinarian daughter, Oji. And do you see what she has here? You can you let the, let the camera see what, what in our friends see? All right, you know what this is called? What's that called? A stethoscope. A stethoscope, that's right. And what is a stethoscope for? To listen to your heart. To listen to your heart. Now, Oji is going to test it on, on her dog. What do you think? How's the dog? Bad? Uh oh. You know what that means? When a doctor uh, uh, listens to your heart and it doesn't sound like it's supposed to, they're going to step in and work to try and heal it. Um, doctors and nurses are really great, dedicated people. Do you know what a physician is? A physician is a really fancy word for doctor. So Jesus is often called the great physician. Jesus has the power to heal beyond our wildest imagination. When he was here on earth, he, he healed people who were blind, who, were, who couldn't talk, who couldn't walk, who couldn't hear. Doctors can do amazing things, but Jesus blows them all away. A doctor can listen to your heart with a stethoscope, but Jesus can look into your, in your heart and your soul and know what you need, what you really need. He offers us forgiveness, and he even offers us a brand new heart. And he'll offer to live in our heart through the Holy Spirit. Today, as we continue looking at the life of Jesus, we're going to see how he healed people. But first, let's look at our continuing story of the Morning Star and see how they're going to try to rescue Fergie. Now, if you haven't, been, if you haven't seen last week's episode, you might want to go back so you know what's going on. I think you'll enjoy this part of that story. So we'll see ya. Goldgrubber and his crew are there. Fergie is somewhere near. We need to send in a spy. Uh, okay, but I'll need a pair of sunglasses and a trench coat. No, not you. Our spy is going to be... Schmutz. What? Me, Captain? You're going in disguise. Remember your costume in the Christmas pageant? I'm going to be a snowman? No, not that Christmas. The year you played a sheep. Now, Schmutz, you're going to casually walk into the Slippery Eel Camp and find Fergie. Find out where he is and bring him back if you can. I don't have any hands. You need eyes and ears, Schmutz. You can do this. So you think we can get off this island today, Gold Grubber? I think we have the repairs made, Scribbles. <laughs> yup, yeah, there sure are a lot of sheep here. That's because there's no natural predators, excepting us pirates. Ha ha! Yup, yup, yup. At least the eating's good here. You can eat all the lamb chops you like, Weevil, instead of eating all of our food stores. I'm telling you, it ain't me. Hello? Hello, sheep. It's me, Schmutz. I don't believe it. Sleep in heavenly peace. Sleep in heavenly peace. Oh, it is you. Can you get me out of here now? My teeth aren't very sharp. Grab that knife over there. Okay, I'll try. Hey, I am free. All right, let's get back to the cave. Wait, we need to get the map. What? Shh, follow me. You're back! I'm, I'm so sorry that you were kidnapped. It's it's all my fault that Goldgrubber stole the map and even catnapped you. I forgive you, Stan. I brought back the map, too. 
No, Stan, don't go beating yourself up. Jesus forgave all of our sins. We don't need hold anything against you either. Now the storm is over, and we need to go before the slippery eels know what we've done. All aboard! Today's story is about a man who is paralyzed. Being paralyzed means that he couldn't walk and probably couldn't use his legs. He would have had to sit or lie down all the time. Jesus was going from town to town performing miracles and everybody wanted to see him. So as Jesus entered one of the homes in Capernaum, people quickly gathered around him. So many people came. There was no room left, not even outside the door. People were pushing each other a little to squeeze everyone in. Plus, there were people gathered outside, peeking in the windows, hoping to see or hear Jesus. There were four men who had heard that Jesus was in town, who decided to carry their paralyzed friend on a mat to see him, to see if their friend could be healed. When they arrived at the house, they realized there were too many people. They couldn't come near Jesus. Someone had an idea. They took their friend and carefully brought him to the roof. The roof was flat and there were stairs on the outside. With a flat roof, People could use this area as an extra living space. It might have been like having a deck on the roof of your house. These kinds of houses didn't have wooden roofs, but tiles or plaster. The four friends began digging through the roof, through the plaster. They lowered their friend down through the roof to be where Jesus was. Imagine listening carefully to Jesus when all of a sudden you hear something breaking through above you. The ceiling is crumbling, chunks falling down on the ground. Just as they had hoped, the man on the stretcher had Jesus' full attention. These men were so sure that Jesus would be able to heal him, otherwise they wouldn't have gone to so much trouble. The first thing Jesus said when he saw that they believed was, Son, your sins are forgiven. Probably not what the man expected, since he came to be healed. However, Jesus knew what the man needed most because he knew what was in his heart. Being paralyzed would be difficult, 
but it would be even worse not to be forgiven your sins. Well, some teachers of the law heard Jesus forgive the man and began thinking, how dare this man forgive sins? Only God can do that. Immediately Jesus knew what they were thinking and said to them, why are you thinking these things? Jesus asked them, which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven or to say, get up, take your mat and walk? But, so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He said to the paralyzed man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. The Bible says that the man got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. I just have to wonder how the man reacted when his legs worked for the first time. The crowd was very amazed, and they praised God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. But I imagine nobody was excited as the four friends who put their faith in Jesus and saw their friend healed. All right. Hey, in today's story, four friends wanted to get their friend to, to Jesus so that he would be healed. And they were relentless. When they couldn't get through the door, what did they do? Yeah, they broke through the roof to let him get, help him get to Jesus. Well, Jesus was impressed with their faith and their love for their friend, and he loved them even more. He told the man, your sins are forgiven. Well, that was kind of odd, because he came to be healed, not to be forgiven. You know, we've learned from other Bible stories that some people thought that the reason they were sick was because they had sinned or their parents had sinned. And maybe this guy thought he was too much of a sinner to receive Jesus' healing. We don't really know. But Jesus offered him forgiveness. Forgiveness is far more important than healing. Everyone in the Bible has since died. And so their healing was good for 70 or so years. But after that, you know, what's really important is that today, if they trusted Jesus as their savior, they're with him forever. So forgiveness is far more important than healing. But when Jesus said, your sins are forgiven, you know who got really angry about that? The Pharisees. The Pharisees. They got really mad. They said, only God can forgive sins. Well, they're right. You know, I can forgive you if you do something mean to me. But only God can forgive your sins. All the things that are in your heart. All the things you've done wrong. But Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God. Jesus knew that many people wouldn't believe unless they saw him do something miraculous. And so he healed the man. He told the man to get up, take up his mat, and go home. And that's exactly what the man did. You know, people were amazed that Jesus gave this man the ability to walk. There are many hurting and suffering people in the world. Some have health problems, some are sick, and sometimes they're healed, like the man in the story. But other times, that doesn't happen. There are people who, who spend their lives blind or deaf or not able to walk. And I don't really know why Jesus heals some people, why some people don't get healed. Um, but I do know that Jesus loves us and cares for all of us. He cares for us by having people in our families who watch over us. He shows us his love. He gives the Bible to read and he listens to us when we pray. He gave us beautiful things like sunsets and mountains, music, things that we can enjoy and think about and thank Him for. But the best thing Jesus did, and He offers us to everyone, is He forgives man's sins. Jesus loves us all. He came so that we could be forgiven. He lived a perfect life. He died for our sins. And He rose from the grave in power so that we could come to know Him. We can spend forever with Jesus. All we have to do is accept his forgiveness. Forgiveness is the most powerful and loving thing that we can experience. And only Jesus can do that. So let's pray. If, if you've not received Jesus as your Savior, I would love for you to pray this prayer with me. We're going to ask him to forgive us of our sins and, and become a part of his family. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that you sent your son Jesus to die for our sins and to rise again. Right now I ask you, Lord, to look into my heart and you see all the sin that's in me. I pray you would wash me clean. Lord, um, give me a new heart like you promised in your word. Write my name in your book so that I can be a part of your family. 
and be with you forever in heaven. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you've done. Pray your blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. Stick around because we've got a challenge coming up. Go! Oh, 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 sorry, I was taking a nap. Um, welcome to the. Uh, oh, sorry, I just woke up. Oh, I'm kind of dizzy. What? Uh, what is this? Is the end of the show? Yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, so hey, welcome. This is the end of our show. And so we have a whole bunch of people who made umbrellas for our challenge this week. And so let's take a look at those umbrellas, okay? We have five umbrellas. So your chances of winning are really good, aren't they? Yeah. So we have in alphabetical order. Here's Abner's umbrella. And Emish's umbrella. And Emily's umbrella. And Erica's umbrella. And finally, OG's umbrella. Hey, I always wondered what that kid looked like. Okay, so now let's uh let's get ready to draw in. Okay. Alright, here we go. And the winner is Emily! Emily, congratulations! Oh, good for you! So we're gonna have, a, at the end of the pirate theme, we're gonna have an award show, and your Lego minifigure will be randomly chosen from maybe thousands, yeah. no, hundreds, no, doesn't, no, maybe a ten or so. Okay, so here's my joke. What do you get when you put three ducks in a box? You get a box of quackers! <laughs> like crackers but quackers. <laughs> so, Alright, for the next challenge, so this week in our pirate uh, our pirate story, we rescued our good friend Fergie, who's like the cutest cat in the world. So we thought maybe you could draw the cutest cat in the world of uh, could be your cat, or it could be a cat from your imagination, or it could be a cat from somebody else's imagination. That takes talent. So, send us a picture of a cat, as cute as you can make it, and we're gonna draw a name and see who wins a minifigure that time. So, that's it for now, huh? Mm -hmm. So, bye kids! Bye! bye.